Greg, just talk about today's energy, practice. What's it like, you know, a few days in? Yeah, I, I really like the guys, the effort and the energy they're putting forth. Our execution is still not close to where it needs to be, but I don't expect it to be. We have five installs in now, so that's a lot of football that's on their plate. It's a lot to know, a lot to remember. The thing that I'm pleased with is they continually chopped all through the practice, and it's hot, and it's, it's rough what we're doing, and we're going at a fast pace, so very, very pleased. When you do that over time, you get better. Greg, arguably your top corner last year, Max Melton, he's back again. You've coached a ton of good corners in the past. How would you kind of compare him to those guys? Max is as talented as any of them. Um, what he's working on right now is consistency. Every play, consistently getting his alignment, understanding what the receiver's giving, what kind of tips the receiver's giving to him, and then uh, finishing the play with great eye discipline. He's getting better and better. Yeah, he's got a chance to be a real good one. Is there uh, any update on the Drew Singleton situation? Yeah, very, uh, very disappointed. Uh, the NCAA ruled against us, so uh, there is another uh, step, a last step that uh, we're certainly going to try. I'm really disappointed. I, I, I stated my feelings beforehand. Um, you want guys to play in bowl games, and you know. Eight days, I don't know, maybe you guys do. Not many teams have accepted a bowl game with eight days, no, eight days notice, had two practices and went and played the bowl game. Not that I know of. So when a, when a draft eligible player comes back to play in that, to me that's pretty special and unfortunately got injured. I just, uh, I struggle. I think that's extenuating circumstances. I understand the whole amateurism rule, but eight days notice? That's extenuating circumstances. I'm not sure how you could define that other than I would like one of them to come get a team ready to go, get a plane during the second biggest outbreak of COVID and say that's not extenuating circumstances. I don't, I don't understand that. We're not going to talk about that anymore. Just to be clear, they denied this, the appeal. Is there still a chance? You said there's something else you asked you to do. There's still a chance that... I just said I'm not going to talk about it anymore. I told you everything there is to know, we're done. Okay. Uh, Aaron Crookshank, uh, what have you seen out of him so far in camp? And just to have him here, you know, less than a year after that injury, just what, how, what kind of a boost does he give to the wide receivers room? Yeah, it's really big. I mean, Aaron is Aaron worked himself into being a really good receiver, not only a return man. And, uh, you know, he had the surgery, so we were very concerned. And, you know, we're not out of the woods yet, but um, he's making progress and he's taking care of himself and he's healing well and he's playing. You know, he's playing. He's not full load yet, but he's close. And uh, we just got to keep bringing him along at a steady pace. But he, he needs to be a good, a good player for us, for sure. Greg, going back to the defensive backs, it seems like you have a pretty good group of safeties this year. We saw Igbenosin flash at the bowl game. Is there a chance that we'll see him and Izian on the field at the same time this year? There is. Yeah, I mean, right now we're trying to work through the different combinations. But uh, that's one that we've worked on, for sure. Greg, Jameer Wright at um, linebacker? Yeah, we made that, that switch. Um, just the other day, you know, he played linebacker in high school. He actually played safety here for two weeks when he first came. Um, but we felt like we needed to bolster that group. And he's, he's somebody that's capable of playing in games if he learns the position. Where do you feel like uh, Tyreen Powell's at and the kind of the strides that he's taken since last season? In the, in the I think Tyreen continues to get better every, every practice. He really works hard at it. Um, he's physically gifted, and he really wants to be great. So that combination usually works as, as long as you work hard, and he's doing that. So just a matter of time. But, you know, he, he doesn't have a ton of experience, just like our whole linebacker crew. So that'll be the key, right, getting experience and hopefully minimizing the mistakes we make. I know you said previously that the Gator Bowl was an opportunity to get some young players some reps. Curious what you saw there from some of those young guys that are parlaying that to right now. Well, yeah, you know, with, with the number of guys that either couldn't play because of COVID or chose not to play because the NFL draft, we did. We were forced to play more young players that hadn't really seen a lot of action. I thought it was great, right? They, they got their first, or, you know, their first real chunk of plays in a big-time environment, right, in a bowl game against a really good Wake Forest team. Uh, there's no substitute for that experience, so that was, that was special. Greg, do you have any timeline on captains? Captains? Yeah. Uh, you know, it was just 
we were just talking about that. It's it'll be here in training camp before the first game. I don't know when yet. Uh, probably sometime after our first scrimmage. Today was the first day with pads. What changes when when those come on, and what did you think of them in this? You know, playing full go, and specifically the quarterbacks. What did you see out of them in the full pads? Well, it's actually the third day. We had pads, you know, we go spider, spider. The NCAA rules are you have to go with spider pads the first two days. Then you have three days, what we call shells, which is shoulder pads and helmets. And now tomorrow we're able to go full pads. On practice six, you can go full. So that'll be the first. There's not a whole lot of difference between full pads and, sp and shells because we don't go to the ground. You know, the only time we really go to the ground is in scrimmages. So if you're not going to the ground, it's still the same contact. You just not uh, tackling to the ground. Obviously, the first scrimmage is coming up this weekend. Yeah. What What are you looking for out of there, and uh, like, what's what, well, what would you ideally like to get out of there? Yeah. You know, scrimmages. You don't get preseason games in college football, so scrimmages are your preseason games. You don't get to scrimmage another team, you know, like you do in high school. So you really don't get that opportunity. What you see is what you get on opening day. So it's real important that it starts with the coaches that we run a a really efficient and effective operation as coaches on the sideline in the press box. And then it's who, who can really handle the ebbs and flows of a game situation, being able to think about the situation and play accordingly. Like some guys are just better at that than others. Some of it's experience, some of it is just, you know, their, their, their love of the game and how much they study it, you know. so. That all comes out in that environment more than out here in this environment. So I look for that because what we ultimately have to do is we have to decide on who the starting 11 are and then who the subs are for those starting 11. And I tell our team that we weight that more heavily than we weight this. We weight it all. We look at it all. We evaluate it all. But we weight that more heavily because that's closer to what you know we ultimately get judged on, and that's game day. Thanks, guys.